The 450 jam stitcher is designed to put stops on your flat jams. When you position it in your shop, you'll need to be able to walk around it. You'll need seven or eight feet at the out feet end for the jams to go, and you'll need seven or eight feet at the in feet end to put jams in. All you'll need to connect it is a place to plug in a 120 volt AC connector and a single air hose. So this is the filter regulator unit on the 450. Connect the inlet air to the inlet side of the system. Uh, the first unit up is a valve. The valve, when shut off, just blocks all of the incoming air and drains all of the air out of the machine. It also provides a lockout point for servicing. The first unit up is the particulate filter and water trap. To remove the bowl, we'll turn off the air pull the lever down, the bowl rotates, partial turn, and then comes out the bottom. This is the filter element. You can unscrew the baffle, take the filter off and replace it, and return the, the bowl and latch it in. The next unit up is a coalescing filter, which is a microfine filter and an oil trap. The bowl is removed the same way and the filter replaced. This unit here is a T, and it allows us to pull air off from that to come over to this regulator. This is the regulator that should be set at 90 PSI and controls most of the air on the machine. It also has a lubricator after it. The lubricator then uh, lubricates the air for the valves and the cylinders. After the T, there is this regulator. This is the regulator for all of for the staple guns and will be set appropriately for the guns depending on the brand and the model of the gun usually around 90 psi also if you have a model of gun with that requires lubricated air then your frl unit will look like this it is virtually the same uh, the difference is that there's no coalescing filter before the t and we add a lubricator after the regulator to lubricate the air for the guns there are two more controls on the side of the main electrical panel. The one at the top is called the last staple switch. When the last staple switch is in the on position, when the jam feeds out, it will always position a nail that is a few inches from the end of the jam. When the last staple switch is off, then the pattern will just play out and it may or may not have a nail close to the end of the jam. There's also a staple adjust on and off. When the switch is on, there is an adjustment on the controller that you can change the spacing of the staples. When the switch is off, it's at the preset dimension, which will be approximately 10 to 11 inches between the staples. Inside the main electrical box, there's a, a terminal strip with numbers on it and a PLC, little controller, little computer. These are the switches we just looked at from the outside. A couple of fuse holders. That's about the size of it. Adjust the staple spacing when you're in the staple adjust mode. We'll open the door here. There are two little adjustment screws at the top. One for right, one for left. Use a small screwdriver and make tiny little turns. A little bit makes a big difference. So just tiny little turns one way or the other. To go, you go clockwise for uh, closer spacing, counterclockwise to widen the spacing. The nail gun is mounted to a bracket assembly that allows it to jump up and down to cushion the blow from the nail gun. There's a roller mounted to this jump assembly. This roller rides on the top of the stop and it controls the distance between the stop and the nose of the gun. The closer the nose of the gun is, the deeper the nail will be set into the stop. The further out it's, it is, the higher the nail will stand. So this is the adjustment here for the roller height. There are two bolts that hold the roller to the bracket. 
And then you can adjust these nuts to change the height of the roller, which will also change the clearance between the nose of the gun and the stop. Every time the gun fires, it jumps up a little bit. This is to help cushion the gun because it's intended as a hand-operated tool and not as a solid mounted tool. So I have a jump cylinder on it. Every time the gun fires, this cylinder extends and then lets it back down softly. We do want it to let it down softly. We want it to come up quickly, but go down kind of soft. So I'm gonna dry cycle this so that you can see it run and I'm gonna adjust that flow control. See how it comes down a little hard and slams at the bottom. So if I adjust this in, now you can see it comes down nicely when it comes down and sets gently. So this flow control down on the side adjusts how fast it jumps up, whereas the one on the top of the cylinder controls how fast it settles down. This is called the side jam reference stop. When the jam is inserted into the machine, it references against the offset bar in here and it touches this stop here. That holds the, th the jam straight for the first nail. Once the cycle start, this cylinder retracts and allows the jam to float through if it is not exactly straight. If the jam's a little curved, it will float through so that you'll always get a consistent distance from the edge of the jam to the edge of the stop. This machine is currently set up to prep jams for an inch and three-eighths door, which means that the edge of the stop, it will be approximately inch and seven-sixteenths from the edge of the jam. To change it over to inch and three-quarter doors, we'll remove this thumb screw, remove this block. This block has attached to it a spacer that's three-eighths of an inch thick that the edge of the jam rides on. Supplied with your machine are two more blocks that do not have a spacer on it. So we put those on, replace the thumb screw to allow the jam to go over another three-eighths of an inch for our inch and three-quarter prep. The other thing we'll need to do is move the side jam reference cylinder over. This one is slotted, so we loosen the two thumb screws. Then we can push the cylinder assembly back to the rear part of its adjustment and tighten it up again. When you change back to inch and three eighths, loosen the thumb screws, push that out to the outer adjustment and simply replace this block with the one that has the stop on it. The thickness of this reference bar is designed to get inch and seven sixteenths from the edge of the stop to the edge of the jam. If you desire a different offset than inch and seven sixteenths, these bars are available in different thicknesses to accommodate that. The 450 Jam Stitcher comes uh, equipped with the quick change stop arms. So this is the arm that has the stops for the jam and the stop on it to position them accurately. If we have, when we have a different setup, a different type of jam, different type of stop, we may need to change those. So instead of, instead of having to actually remove all of the stops from the arm, use a 3 16 Allen wrench which is supplied with the machine, loosen the, the lock assembly, and the arm will just slip right out. We can replace it with another arm that has, that's set up for a different stop assembly and lock it into place. The quick change stop arms have a dovetail in the back to slide in and out. There's a stop bolt on the bottom. This stop bolt adjusts the height at which the stop stops at when you turn the air back on. The stop arms are the same from left and right. The arm itself is the same part number. The only difference from left to right is which side of the stop you put the stop bolts on. So all of the stop arms are the same. So once we have a setup, the stop arm will simply slide in onto the matching dovetail on the block. You 
Use our 3 16 Allen wrench in the hex and it should just be about a quarter turn to lock it in place. The stop assemblies have cylinders to lift them up and set them back down again. When you start the cycle, the cylinder needs to lift the stop out of the way so the jam can flow through and then put it back down again after the cycle is complete. There are flow controls on the cylinder. The flow control at the top of the cylinder controls how fast the stop goes down. The one at the bottom of the cylinder controls how fast it comes up. When it's set correctly, the stop should come up quickly and go down very slowly. It needs to come up quickly to get out of the way before the jam starts to move. And then it needs to go down slowly because it will start coming down before the jam has flowed completely through. So if it comes down slowly, it'll come down after the jam has left. The 450 has four power feed wheels, two on each side. The power feed wheel closest to the out feed end is always up and is spring loaded. There's a spring at the end here. The front power feed wheel is raised up and down with this cylinder here. When the cycle starts, the power feed wheel goes up. When the cycle ends, it comes back down again. The speed that the wheel goes up at the beginning of the cycle controls the spacing between the first nail and the second nail. That speed is controlled by this flow control here. The slower the, slower the wheel goes up, the closer the first nail is to the second nail. The faster it goes up, the further the first nail is from the second nail. The controls on the 450 are very simple. Uh, in the center of the control panel we have an emergency stop button which we can pull to turn it on. Then you have a right side start and a left side start. When you put the jam in to the right side it will cover the button for the left side start and you use this button to start the right side. That's why they're on opposite sides. There are also a set of foot pedals on the floor and again they're labeled right side and left side and they can be positioned wherever it is convenient for the operator. To operate the 450, we'll insert a jam, the dado end first, in one side of the machine, push it into the stop, insert the door stop on top of that, all the way to the stop. I'll push the button to start the cycle. While that's running, I'm going to load the other side and when this one's done I'll push the button to start this side and then I would be able to load the first side again. So let's go ahead and start the cycle. <laughs> 